In this short video, we're going to turn our attention to 5G and Wi-Fi integration. This is particularly topical at the moment as we actually debate whether 5G and Wi-Fi 6, the latest incarnation of Wi-Fi, can be seen as a complementary or competing technology. 5G then provides wide area network coverage and the technical standards are defined by the 3GPP, the third generation partnership project. However, Wi-Fi 6 or 802.11ax is actually defined by the IEEE and this provides wireless local area network coverage. However, be it 5G or Wi-Fi 6, we can see there are commonality. In terms of high throughput, both systems supporting gigabits per second data throughputs, low latency in terms of the time it takes to move the information across the network, here in the case of milliseconds, and finally high capacity, the ability to support many hundreds of devices per radio or base station. So then, most people would generally consider that Wi-Fi and the cellular networks, 5G in this case, are actually complementary technologies. Here on the diagram then, we can see a simple 5G network architecture, made up of the device, the base station, the G node B, and the 5G core network. The core network broken down into the control element, made up of the AMF, the SMF, and the UDM, and the user plane element, here the user plane function, or the UPF. Now the key aspect of our 5G network is the ability to support a session, or a PDU session to be particular. And it's the PDU session marked on the screen, which is where the data will be carried across the network. Here, from the device, up through the G node B, the base station, and then out through the anchor point, the user plane function, onto the external data network, potentially the internet. Now if we add Wi-Fi, we can see that the 3GPP have already defined the ability to support interworking. Here on the diagram we've added the Wi-Fi access point, which connects back through to an N3 IWF, a non-3GPP interworking function. The name here derived because Wi-Fi is not defined by the 3GPP. From the N3 IWF, we can see we can connect back into the 5G core, the UPF in terms of throughput of data, but also out to the AMF, the Access Mobility Management function for control. It's also worth pointing out that the connection between the access point and the N3 IWF will generally cross the internet, and as such, Wi-Fi here will be considered to be an untrusted network. To this end, an IPsec tunnel will then be established between the device and the N3 IWF, ensuring that information will be protected as it travels across the Wi-Fi network. Here on the diagram then, we can see the way that traffic is now carried via the Wi-Fi network, from the device, through the Wi-Fi access point, up to the N3 IWF, and then out through the UPF onto the external data network. The key aspect here is regardless of whether the data is being carried across 5G or Wi-Fi, it will still run through the anchor point of the UPF. And therefore, we can switch the PDU session between Wi-Fi and 5G, depending upon which is the best network for the device to use. We would generally term this seamless mobility, and a good example of this would be switching a voice call from voice over new radio or voice over 5G onto Wi-Fi calling as a user returns home, for example. One enhancement which is worth pointing out, which deals with 5G and Wi-Fi integration, is that of ATSSS, defined here as access traffic steering, switching and splitting. On the diagram then, we can see the device supporting its multi-access PDU sessions spanning across either the 3GPP access network, 5G, or the non-3GPP access network, Wi-Fi, terminating through the UPF, part of the 5G core network. Therefore, with this form of integration, we can see that we can support steering, in that based on local conditions or subscriber profile information, the device now can steer the traffic either over 5G or Wi-Fi, 
picking the best network. Alternatively, switching allows us to move the PDU session from, say, 5G over to Wi-Fi and vice versa, potentially here supporting seamless mobility. And finally, splitting the ability to take a PDU session and send some of the traffic via the 5G network, whereas the remaining traffic will be carried across Wi-Fi.